So I'm just gonna cut to the chase here. Did you feel underwhelmed by the graphical presentation found in Halo Infinite as shown off in the Xbox Series X showcase? Would you say it looks flat or current gen? Well, then this video is for you as I will try and explain why you may feel this way based upon the trailer. And really, I think it can be easily explained and it all comes down to lighting for the most part. What do I mean here by lighting? Well, let us look at the terrain and time of day here present in the trailer. The sun is hanging around the horizon with a lot of intervening terrain or trees. If you looked at this terrain from a 2D version, it would probably look like this where you would see a lot of the gameplay space as present in this trailer is out of reach of direct lighting from the sun, either because you're in a valley, a dell, or the sun's light is otherwise obscured somehow. Simply put, a large portion of this gameplay video showcases shots and scenarios that are out of direct sunlight and in shadow. This is a big problem for video games visuals based upon technical decisions that Halo Infinite has. As a rule of thumb, and this really applies to so many games, video game graphics nearly uniformly are not great at representing areas that are primarily in shadow. You see, Halo Infinite looks to be utilizing real-time lighting and real-time shadowing. In fact, there's evidence of the time of day moving ever so slightly in this gameplay trailer. This might be done for gameplay reasons or design and development reasons, but there are associated issues with this decision of using real-time lighting and real-time shadowing. For one, real-time direct lighting and real-time shadowing is more expensive than lighting and shadowing being static. So a game like The Last of Us Part 2 ends up saving a lot of performance in its lighting, which is static primarily. Static lighting has the advantage as well as being able to easily represent light bouncing around a scene. So those static regions in shadow tend to look rather nice as that bounce lighting is baked into the surface of the object. Though there are downsides, of course, to using static lighting. Static lighting requires a lot of iteration time in development, as any change to a scene by an artist will require the lighting to most likely be recalculated. Static lighting's inherent nature also means that there are realism problems with it and consistency problems. Any dynamic object in a scene with static lighting primarily, those dynamic objects will be lit completely different than the static objects in the environment. This is something that happens in all games with static lighting, but your mind may just ignore it, which is fine. Either way, dynamic lighting and shadowing like we're seeing in Halo Infinite is more expensive, but has the advantage of affecting dynamic and static screen objects in the same exact fashion, so nothing sticks out and everything is treated equally. At the same time, traditional non-ray trace dynamic lighting and shadowing like in Halo Infinite does not have reasonable facsimiles of light bouncing around in shadowed areas. So you do not see indirect shadows from objects in shadows really, nor do you see detailed bounce lighting in shadows. The game having all of its lighting being dynamic and not as a static texture over the entire scene prevents accurate lighting in shadowed regions. It's a trade-off for sure, but iteration times in games with real-time lighting are fast as there's no recalculating of static lighting. And it also allows the time of day to be changed as you play, or lights can be moved more easily as you play the game. As I said though, a game like Halo Infinite has a problem with those areas of the screen that are in shadow from direct lights. Like this area in the graphic I showed off earlier. The area where no sunlight or other lights are affecting the scene. Given the state of the art of technology, there are a few ways to emulate or simulate lighting in those areas. The first of which I will mention is what Halo Infinite appears to be using. As I see it in this trailer, Halo Infinite looks like it is using an image probe style system modified by screen space ambient occlusion and perhaps other screen space techniques like screen space reflections. These combined techniques are used to emulate the look of bounced lighting and shadowing of that lighting in areas of shadow. In fact, as I'm showing here, you can see in one part of the trailer how these game probes after the menu switches off seem to turn on after a certain amount of time and load in. They generate in real time. Lighting probes are simplified captures of light from a point in the game world that are scattered across the game world. So they show the general direction and color of lighting from four to six directions probably. If you map that spherical image from that point and wrap it around almost like a texture around a dynamic or static model, like a character model, or an environmental piece like an unmoving rock, it would look like the dark side of that character model or rock is colored by the lighting around it and the sky above. 
To make it look like this lighting changes based upon the movement of objects throughout this world, character models and objects will change the probe image lighting based upon their location in the world, interpolating between the various probes. But really, this is an extreme approximation and emulation of the real effect of bounce lighting around a scene. This style of probe indirect lighting wraps that captured light texture around the models in such a way that it does not really show off the direction of light very well. It basically comes from everywhere around a model, more or less. Secondly, this light that it is capturing is not self-occluding, usually. So an object's own surface will not shadow itself from this light in any way. So the corners, crevices, and other parts of a model that should not be receiving much or any light are still being lit. This causes the edges of models or models entirely to glow. And you'll find this in so many games it is not funny. Even your favorite games from this generation which are lauded for their graphics will have this problem. Check out this shot here from Death Stranding on PS4 Pro. Most of the character here is in shadow, yet all these bits of his suit and character model have light glow on them from essentially nonsensical directions. This is the effect of probe indirect lighting on a model. It helps emulate the look of indirect lighting, but it also has side effects as well. So developers try and obscure some of this light away. They can either use screen space ambient occlusion usually, or screen space reflections. Screen space ambient occlusion will help get rid of some of that diffuse lighting. Diffuse lighting is basically the less reflective light attached to a surface. So the dull color of a surface more or less. Screen space reflections will help occlude and localize some of the specular lighting in shadowed regions. So any of the metal or heavily reflective bits will look a bit better with SSR on. But still the primary problem is there, and screen space trickery can only get you so far. Especially if we're talking about massive environmental geometry or complex large character models. Here you can see in Halo Infinite how using SSAO to obscure light for a very large object far into the distance has an artifact where where the first person gun obscuring the model also obscures the shadow on it as well, and it disappears. This is a decidedly last generation solution to this problem with dynamic lighting. The first usage of the model I described here was pioneered primarily by Ubisoft in Far Cry 3, a game which came out in 2013 and shows off these exact same issues I talked about here. So it's an older way of doing things, and it shows really well if you look at those areas when characters or objects are out of direct lighting. So out of the sunlighting or out of the light from things like torches. Like look at the assault rifle here in the opening cutscene of this gameplay trailer. Do you see how flat the lighting is on the assault rifle when it is in shadow? It looks like there's almost no detail on the assault rifle. Or here, look at the lighting on the grunts here in the shadow in an official screenshot that they released. Do you notice how their legs and bodies are glowing even though they're in shadow? Where is this light coming from exactly? It's all rather directionless and flat. If you look at reflective or specular lighting in a shadow, you can see the exact same behavior. Like here, look at the warthog as Chief approaches it. If you stop the frame, you can see what I mean. The entire inside of the warthog, which is in shadow, is lit by probes. And that light looks to be only obscured by screen space techniques. So the entire inside of the warthog has glowing edges all over it. The lighting choices of this trailer, and specifically the fact that most of it takes place in a shadowed region, is failing to bring out the actual details of these character models, textures, and materials. And really, I imagine the quality of these materials and textures and models is actually very high, it's just that the lighting here doesn't do them justice. The thing is, dynamic lighting is a double-edged sword, and the principles of physically based rendering make it even more dangerous. This will take a second to understand, but once you understand it, it will be really enlightening, I think. So back in the day, developers used to author game textures in such a way that most of the lighting was already baked into the texture. I do not mean as static lighting necessarily like we saw in The Last of Us Part 2, but it's related conceptually. The way a model's textures used to look was primarily decided by its diffuse texture and its specular texture. And really, the diffuse texture was really important. The diffuse texture would handle all the rough lighting on an object. So tons of things were drawn into this diffuse texture. Shadows were drawn in there, wear and tear, scuffs and marks, and even fake reflections were drawn into diffuse textures. So if you go back and look at textures in games like Halo Reach, like on the assault rifle here, you can see a lot of smaller detail on that gun model. It looks really detailed no matter what the lighting is in the environment. But it's not physically accurate at all, and it does not respond to the environment's lighting very well. But it is detailed for sure. 
Physically based rendering, or how textures and materials are made in modern games, changes this completely. Nowadays, a diffuse texture, or albedo as it is more commonly called now, has just a tiny bit of color information in it usually, and that is about it. Rather, what gives a model or a texture most of its look these days is found in the normal maps and gloss maps, or metalness maps, which describe in detail how a model will react to real-time lighting. So if most of a model or texture's detail is handled by textures that only really show up well in dynamic lighting and dynamic shadows, then the problem is obvious. In games that use dynamic lighting, like in Halo Infinite here, objects and textures in shadow will lose a lot of their detail. In Halo Infinite's case, this happens all throughout the demo because it takes place primarily in shadow. The presumably high detail models and textures look flat and undetailed as they are only lit by extremely basic approximations of light or shadow in shadowed regions. Here is a great example. The Elite the Master Chief is dueling with here steps out from a non-shadow casting light indoors into an area between the building and the outside. Here this area is not lit by anything directly, it is completely in shadow. If you stop the frame as the Elite is in this shadow, you can see the problem I'm talking about. The entire Elite model, its armor, and its textures look flat. All of the physically based textures and material detail is not able to show itself due to how the game handles indirect lighting in this video. If you stop many frames in this video, you can see this happening on many game world objects. So what can exactly be done to fix this problem? Static lighting as a solution probably does not mesh necessarily with Halo Infinite's game design goals, nor would it necessarily fix the problem for how lighting looks on dynamic objects like character models, foliage, or all the physics and moving objects in this game. Halo is a very dynamic world. The solution I think instead comes from next generation lighting techniques, so through forms of tracing. Either this means hardware ray tracing, which the Xbox Series X supports, or some form of software style tracing, like the Lumen technology found in Unreal Engine 5, or sparse voxel octree global illumination as found in CryEngine, Sfogi. These technologies are expensive in terms of performance, but they are incredibly worth it as I see it. Now here's an example to show how worth it it is from Metro Exodus. Here in this scene, this dynamic object, a character model, and the environment around the character model is primarily in the sunlight's shadow. So the character model and environment are only lit really through a probe-like solution that Metro Exodus has, as well as screen space ambient inclusion and screen space reflections. If you notice, this character model and the environment around them has the exact same problems as we saw in Halo Infinite and thousands of other games. There is light leaking and glow across the character and all the metal objects in the scene. The lighting on the face and the armor and the clothes is very flat. The materials look all very samey, even with screen space reflections and screen space ambient occlusion. But Metro Exodus also shipped with ray trace global illumination as well. If you turn that on, it dramatically changes the look of this character model and of all the materials in the scene. Much of the detail in those PBR textures can now breathe as lighting is available which can drive their existence. The light has direction now to it, so the materials have lighting direction on them. It completely transforms this scene and model from being dull and under-detailed to being lively and detailed. This is the kind of look you might have wanted when you watched the Halo Infinite trailer, and honestly, it is something that I also wanted to see as well. With some form of tracing to help indirect lighting and those areas in shadow, Halo Infinite would be a dramatically different looking game than that which we saw in this gameplay footage. But to use such lighting there would need to be compromises of course. For one, Xbox One and Xbox One X versions of this game would assuredly not be able to use this style of lighting. But we want to see a generational difference anyway with a game running on Xbox Series X, so who cares honestly if those older platforms do not get the latest and greatest tech. Xbox Series X has hardware ray tracing for a reason, and this seems like a great usage of it. Secondly, utilizing some form of tracing would invariably mean reducing the resolution of the game as we see it on Xbox Series X. For me here, that isn't a deal breaker, as as long as the game is 60 FPS and primarily GPU limited, resolution is completely overrated. This is especially true in the age of image reconstruction and dynamic resolution. I mean, would you really rather have old style lighting techniques at 4K or next gen style lighting techniques at 1440p? I know my answer to that question. 
While I think the flatness of the lighting was the greatest factor affecting the visuals in this demo, there are other factors that played a role. The next largest point would be the level of detail pop-in that you can see in the trailer. So as the Master Chief or camera goes throughout the world, you can see rocks and grass popping in around the player view. I do not even need to zoom in here for you to see it. This happens for objects far into the distance like these fog billboards here, as well as for things extremely close to the camera, like grass, that you can see at the bottom here as the camera moves upward. There are two reasons why I think this is happening. The first is because this game is using legacy systems designed around the base Xbox One, and they're not scaling really well, I think. And the other is because I think this game is very GPU bound, as I cannot imagine the CPU or SSD are being completely worked out here. Since this game is going for a really high resolution with native 4K, it is targeting an insane amount of raw pixels, and it's doing that at 60 FPS. Having lots of vegetation on screen or pixel sized triangles at such a frame rate at such a resolution will tank the frame rate. So this game is targeting a resolution probably that is too high for its own good. It would probably look better at a lower resolution with higher LOD values. Then there are smaller things, like the lack of first person shadows on the gun and hands. Games like Crisis 3 have been doing first person shadows on hands since 2013, and it can be done even cheaply in screen space as the Call of Duty games have shown. It is generally confusing that this small effect, which has big visual gains, was not considered for the Xbox Series X version of this game. And that's we have some art design decisions, like the very opaque effects work. I'm not sure what it is, but the shield effects and plasma effects and explosion look overly opaque and very solid. A good example is if you look at the elite shield effect from Halo Reach and that in this game. For some reason I vastly prefer Reach's. And there are other things like the material choices. Yes, the flat indirect lighting murders the asset quality here on average, but a number of the assets in direct lighting look to have what I would call unimaginative materials, like plastics or standard metals. This is a far cry from the very vibrant alien materials that were used for Covenant armor in the previous games. I'm not sure what the future holds for Halo Infinite given the reaction to this gameplay debut, but Microsoft have announced a ray tracing support patch for Halo Infinite after it launches. I'm not sure what that ray tracing patch entails, but I seriously hope it does something to alleviate the indirect lighting issues that I highlighted throughout this video to a degree if possible. And until we learn more, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did find it enlightening and helped describe that feeling you had, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to see more content like this in the future and help us out, consider supporting Digital Foundry on Patreon to get years worth of Digital Foundry content available in high quality for download. If you want to talk to me about indirect lighting and why it is so important for video game graphics, write a comment below or follow me in Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.